What is going on guys? Rodney here with Crypto Bros bring you another cryptocurrency video and tonight we're actually talking about Archain aka the Rock Token. Uh, before we jump into this, I will say this is probably the most challenging video I've done. It's just taken a lot of like research and time to to dig into the tech, to be able to portray it. If I butcher this, I'm sorry, bear with me. This was just a tough one, but we are going to get through it. So that being said, let's get into this. Oh, real quick, um, I don't cover everything absolutely head to toe outside of the tech. This, they have so many things going on, but uh, we're going to go pretty deep in there. So first and foremost, what is Archain? Archain is a third generation blockchain platform. And what they're trying to accomplish is, is to get 40,000 transactions per second. Their goals are to solve global scalability and security. They understand that there is a need for a high performance blockchain that can handle um, traffic and transactions at this type of pace. So what they're trying to do is stay true or they are truly decentralized. They're trying to stay truly on the chain and they are open source. Um, they've developed their own contract language called Rolang. It is a combination of uh, mobile process calculus and pi calculus. They use this to develop row calculus. They took this to basically develop Rolang, which is a concurrent smart contract language for the blockchain, where the, how they're gonna be processing all this is through the row virtual machine, and they're gonna be doing like a, a more sophisticated version of sharding. If you watch my Zillica video, I cover sharding in this. I will say in terms of even explaining it, it's a little more complex, but we'll get into that in a minute. But basically, the whole overlying um, piece here is they are just trying to keep transactions and processes uh, that don't need to interact with other transactions and, transactions and processes like separate. And, and I'll cover that in a minute. But basically, you know, if you're like I'm in Michigan, and if I'm doing some type of transaction, it doesn't need to interact with your transaction. If you're in Australia, they just want to keep those independent, and this is how they plan on scaling. So, um, how does this work? Again, a little more sophisticated version of sharding. They're going to be using independent namespaces, and an easy way to, like I said, to kind of um, describe this is they are basically decoupling interactions that don't need to be coupled together meaning processes or transactions don't need to be synchronized on the blockchain. And this is where we run into a lot of scalability issues. The current blockchains sync every transaction in the world and then put them in, in sequence. Like think this is like what Ethereum does. So our chain doesn't require this. Um, they're, they're basically keeping all transactions independent of other transactions where they can. This allows the their blockchain to be subdivided into nodes um, to run... Uh, on or to run on the blockchain where they don't actually have to process the entire blockchain to do that. They just need enough nodes for like security reasons and good consensus. So uh, we're going to kind of start diving into, into the meat of this. If you don't really give a shit about the technology tech backing of this, you can probably just close this video. But if you want to learn a little uh, thing or two, stick around. But so how our chain works, um, you know, if we think about Ethereum, and if you want to do a transaction on this network or on Ethereum, everything is synchronized, you know, across the whole blockchain. And like I said, it's put into, um, it's put in a sequence. So the synchron synchronization is very expensive. It doesn't allow for high performance data flow. Um, and it's, and it makes basically every transaction interact with every other transaction, regardless of what you're doing. So our chain is breaking this model completely. Now we're going to do dive into a little bit of history lesson so you can kind of understand the backing here. So the vast majority of like this space is built on what is called the von Neumann machine. And I just pulled a little snippet here from Wikipedia. You can easily Google this, but um, the von Neumann architecture is a, con a conceptual model of computer architecture, and it basically is just a class of machines that can replicate themselves, and, and this is kind of what blockchain and specifically smart contracts are, are built on. Um, what our chain was, was built on and upon is, is Pi Calculus. Now, Pi Calculus was, was discovered or built or whatever it was put together 25 years ago. It's a model of um, computation that allows processes to interact concurrently. And all that means is they, they interact simultaneously 
simultaneously. Um, and then right here you can obviously see it says concurrencies allow processes that are actually independent to run independent of all of the processes. And uh, the guy that kind of took this and, and put all this together, this row calculus is Greg Meredith. He is the head honcho over at um, our chain and this type of process is what allows for like this mass scaling. And we'll talk about um, some of the things they're doing. There's two parts. There's like the tech side of this business and there's like our chain holdings. This is like they're dealing with like enterprise, having high level conversations, building partnerships, all types of this thing, all types of like the, the business side of the aspect. But we'll get into this in a second. So um, the next thing here is is namespaces and sharding. Um, this is kind of where it gets a little bit complicated, but namespaces are like URLs, meaning they're like uh, domain pages with sub pages in there. And using namespaces is how the blockchain is sharded into a hierarchy, a hierarchy of domains. And this is all dependent on the need of processes that are coming through the blockchain. So um, transactions are actually like in, in Ethereum, transactions are actually validated within individual Sorry, I butchered that. In our chain, transactions are, are actually validated within individual namespaces as opposed to an entire namespace like Ethereum. So this is kind of how like they are partitioning things up, yet it is not finalized. The one thing that's worth noting here is like their, their, uh, their MVP, their test net is actually coming out in the fall and it will be called Mercury. So um, what they're trying to do is basically smart contracts run in parallel, like this is kind of like the basis of sharding, but there's um, uh, no concurrency, no interaction needed between different processes. The way they're doing this is called scope extrusion and this is a piece of pi, uh, pi calculus. Um, now I'm just gonna read this here because I will butcher it if I don't. Um, but this just says, um, scope exclusion determines when a smart contract needs to be elevated into a larger namespace to interact with other smart contracts in order to handle processes and interactions. Once, uh, then once it is done processing those interactions, they use scope retraction to bring it back down into a smaller namespace where like these type of, of transactions and interactions can run more cheaply. What's cool about this um, is that it, it kind of puts the onus back on the user in the miners hands they can dictate fees um, it helps identify places in the blockchain where there are lots lots of transactions um, and helps keep them kind of independent of all the other transactions going on so it's a really uh, a really high-tech thing that they have going on here to keep everything separated you gotta keep them separated hey, hey, hey. scaling and uh, real-world uses this work we're, we're gonna kind of talk about um, our chain holdings. This is kind of like the, the business aspect of, of this whole um, project here. And as I mentioned, Mercury released sometime fall 2018. But what they're doing in our chain holdings is they are um, some of the industries they're, they're approaching in terms of large scale are like enterprise and industrial opportunities. And it's all based on cost because they know that Putting some of these large chains, millions and millions of transactions on the blockchain is so much cheaper. So industries um, that they're looking for right now is like insurance, supply chain, healthcare, legal, even music. Um, and these are all just industries that have lots and lots of scale and lots and lots of transactions. So, you know, they're going to be working on stuff like storage, document transfer, property title transfers, identi identity solutions, membership onboarding, like all these different things. And what's cool about this is, is they have their business side actively working on this, why the tech side is developing, you know, t some of their, their, their projects, their use cases, the, the, just the overall product that people can build on top of. And so um, I, I actually really like that aspect because they're almost, I don't want to say like they're pre-selling, but they're, they're getting their ducks in a row. So when things launch, they can incorporate some of these things ASAP. Um, um, and part of the part of the big thing here Ed, that is worth mentioning is with our chain, they have like their security aspect baked right into the rolling language. Some of these other blockchains, and I can't speak for all of them, you know, security is actually tacked on later as a as opposed to being built in. Um, don't quote me on that. I picked that notation up from the blockchain Brad interview with these guys and they kind of go a little more in depth on that. So um, if you're interested in this token at all, it's absolutely worth watching that interview. Um, 
there, there's one guy from the Archain Holdings and the one guy in there from the tech side, and they go in there and they, they talk about a vast majority of things. So I, I use that to help validate some of the information I was picking up. So anyway, um, on to specific partnerships. Right now, their, their biggest play is like identity solutions. They're working with companies like Trusted Key, Life ID, everybody in this space. Um, they're also having conversations with credit card companies um, that want their own microtransactions, that want to have their, their own loyalty programs. They're talking with universities. They're working with exchanges and, and not necessarily like exchanges to get their coins or their, their, their rock token listed on there, but how to scale these exchanges to handle um, to handle like uh, transactions and, and trades and stuff more efficiently. So all very cool. Um, and and one thing that's worth noting is, you know, so there's companies out there that want to use blockchain, but the level that they need it is, you know, the current blockchains can't can't manage that. They're not they're not performing at a high enough level to transact all their processes. So this is kind of where these all these different level three. Um, I'm sorry, uh, all these different uh, blockchain version 3.0s like come in today, which like EOS, Cardano, uh, Zilliqa, and I'm sure we're going to see over the next like, I don't know, few years that there's likely going to be some competition in the market and one of them I'm sure will emerge to the top, but I, I like to, you know, I, I'm not in all of them, but uh, in terms of myself, I think having little pieces and supporting each each project is actually fairly smart. So. Um, Moving on, a couple of the things that, that I like, some side notes here, is they understand that they are going to be a brand new um, blockchain that's hitting the market. So, you know, when we're talking about change and resistance and people moving over to, to new platforms, like they they recognize that that is always an issue. And so what they're doing right now is is with that resistance or future resistance, they're doing a lot of stuff like this is what Archain Holding is doing. They're trying to build the partnerships. They're trying to combat this with education, with information, um, you know, kind of get people on their team so when they're ready to launch, they can hit the ground running. I think that's wickedly smart and um, I don't know, it seems so common sense, but I'm not sure if everybody is doing that. I can't speak to some of these other projects. But uh, other things they're working on is like, energy consumption you know we're talking about you know all the uh, from like a a, uh, a green footprint how much energy is used to run some of these blockchains to process these high level of transactions so they're they're <clears throat> excuse me guys they're really big on that and uh, and storage so they're so big on storage like this is actually like built into their blockchain like we think and I and I hate referencing this but we think about like um, uh, like crypto kitties and Actually, yeah, that shouldn't be on there. Um, but if we if we think about how much information and data is actually stored on the blockchain, this is what bogs it down a lot. So um, data storage is definitely a fundamental part of our chain. Um, the project is actually, they're so big on doing this. There's other industries and other projects that, that want to get in on this piece because they're going to be able to store so much information here. I don't, I don't want to go super in depth on that one because I don't know a ton about it. And two, um, I just know that it's a very big part of this project. So, um, and if you just kind of think about like everyday use cases, we're talking like healthcare records, food and safety records, anyone, anything, there's just a ton of data, um, is on there. So, um, if you have never heard of our chain before in, in terms of, of blockchain, uh, programs, like we look at everything that's done well in 27 or 2017 and in, into 2018. It's these big blockchain, you know, programs. I kind of mentioned this in the, in the Zilka video. Like these are these are where things are emerging. These are where people are investing their money. These are the the um, in terms of ROI, the projects that are are likely to do the best. Um, so if you're wondering where you can get it, you can actually get it at KuCoin. It's also on Gate.io. Um, both are fantastic exchanges. I use them both. I have my referral links down below. If you want to sign up, you can. If not, no worries. Um, one other thing that I also like about um, our chain is is the rogue tokens that is are is what trading. Sorry. One other thing that I like about the rogue token, um, and these are the 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 tokens that are being traded on the on the platform, is like when they start get things going, you're actually going to be able to stake these, and they're going to have a staking program. You'll be staking the coins in Rev. And you will be getting like a payout. And and what we've seen in in terms of like historical data, a lot of these staking programs where you get some type of of payout or kickback for staking the coins is, is very beneficial. And they are also um, proof of stake protocol, which everybody likes. So um, I wasn't going to cover 
the team credentials, but I will just because we're here. So like I said, the head honcho is Greg Meredith. He's a mathematician, computer scientist, visionary. This dude also developed BizTalk, which is a um, which is a server for Microsoft. Big BizTalk is like a business workflow application. Um, when they when they put that together, they applied PyCalculus to do this. So this guy in general, like I know a lot of people invest in like people and teams, but this guy in general is, is brilliant, brilliant dude, and uh, and brings a lot to the table here. He's also the CTO of Lively Gig, which is a decentralized employment slash like market or services market application the rest of their team are just straight beasts though there's seven uh, phds on there there's loads of engineers there's forex guys from google and a lot of these dudes have like 20 plus years in this space working on projects like this um it's also worth noting that you know they're very they're very active in communicating with the guys over at ethereum specifically vitalik buterin and they also um have uh vlad zamvir who's actually very recognizable in the crypto space, and he is on their board of um, directors. I hope I pronounced everybody's name right. If not, you guys will tear me up. So yeah, um, this is one project that I like, and, and I'm not out here shilling this coin. I don't even have, like, this isn't even like my number one holding, but this is something that I, I think has a lot of room for growth. We just kind of swing over really quick to, to where we're performing at today. Oh, shit. Uh, this right here, this is like... Trying to get through some of the stuff was brutal, but this is like how they're dealing with like their namespaces and different crap on Pi Calculus, this, that, the other thing. But um, but yeah. So what I found was actually really cool is is within the last couple of days, um, we're on coin coin checkup, but this actually held really well um, as opposed to some of the the other coins in there. I think we're actually up a fraction of a percent if I um, go back. But you know during this downturn. Um, and this is up maybe 8%. Uh, but during the downturn, this held its value very well. And I think, you know, where this coin is currently at, I don't want to necessarily say that, like, it's undervalued or anything. But I think it's just flown under the radar so hardcore that not a ton of people know about it. I know that, that Ian Bellina did some stuff on, on, like, when they were having their ICO. They didn't really do an ICO. It was more of, like, a co-op membership thing. Um, you had to pay to get in, so I, I don't think he invested in that, but uh, he actually did a really good interview um, with one of the guys on their team from um, the Archain Holdings, which is very interesting to watch. I recommend that, but um, you can check out their website. It is archain.coop.com. Um, uh, you can Google it, kind of scroll through here. There's some pretty interesting stuff on this. Uh, it's worth watching the video so you can get a better grasp on what it is, and um, last but not least, we can actually see, uh, check out the charts here on KuCoin. It's trading at two dollars and ten cents, um, and I just think there's once they gain some traction, once they kind of make it to some of these other exchanges, like I said, right now they're on Gate and KuCoin. I, I think the the sky is going to be the limits, at least for 2018 in this coin. So I hope that was not too painful. I will tell you um, the benefit here is I learned so much doing all this research, so I'm grateful for that, but trying to portray this information when you're not in the space is a biatch. So, anyway guys, that is all I have for you tonight. Leave some questions below, I will do my best to answer it. Um, if anything, you know, just do some of your own research on this. I, I think what history has shown us is blockchains, big protocol, big architecture projects like this are, are the way, you know, are, are the way of the future in terms of, of trading coins and, and building an ROI, if that is your thing. But overall, that is all I got for you guys tonight. Um, if you're finding these videos helpful, if you like seeing my face, by all means, subscribe to the channel, toss your boy a like. This one was not easy, guys. Like, uh, this one took some cognitive functions, so throw me a like for that. But anyways, um, I'll be back probably tomorrow or Friday with another video. I'm still kind of working on some things on the back end here, but I uh, appreciate the heck out of you. So you guys have a great night. See ya.